Hello and welcome to Infinity. This is the second in a series showing how to use procedural texture to do a selection mask. So what we've got here is the procedural texture. We come to that in a moment. First, just as a quick reminder, if we look up here, there's the color shown. If I move these around here, if I move one to the bottom, another one to somewhere in the middle and one to the top, I've got a fully saturated because it's the gap between the lowest and the highest. If I bring it in the middle, then this gets more gray because saturation is a gap between the lowest and the middle. I can bring it down there. Now it's between these two, the lowest and the middle. And when I bring them all to about the same, the gap is zero and I've got myself a gray, which is a monochrome. So I can then select between the monochrome and the colorful and how colorful a, a pixel is because this is applied to each pixel. So let's have a look at what we did last time. We did that idea up here of taking the maximum, subtracting the minimum, and this gives us a measure then. And here we've got it here. So the maximum open brackets RGB minus the minimum of RGB. To find where these come from, go to help and to Affinity Photo Help, then type in Procedural Texture. If we look at this here, then there's Procedural Texture. And if I scroll down the bottom here, this explains all those functions that we can use. So here we've got the min and the max there. It's a very, very or description here, it gives you just the variables that you use, and there's no examples, no page which explains each one. So it you have to kind of guess or just follow along with what we're doing here. So if I turn this on now, then this shows me because I've got red, green, and blue selected, this is applied to red, green, and blue channels within each pixel, then I've got the picture here of the saturation where the lightest is the highest saturation and the darkest is the lowest saturation. If I turn those off and put on just the A, then now as the mask is applied and we only see and then any, if I apply the mask to any adjustment, then that adjustment will only apply to those areas. So if I go back to the red, green, and blue, what we notice here is that it's not actually fully bright. In fact, if you go to the histogram, you can see it's only occupying this amount. So if you want to mask, it'd be nice to have this all the way up here. What I could do here is go down to adjustments, go to levels, and then go to the white level and bring this down to just touching this. Now I'm ranging here from white to black. See, this stretched that out here, and that will help me then fill that up. But I've now got an extra thing here. So couldn't I just do it in procedural texture? And the answer is yes. So now what we're going to do to do that is put brackets, one bracket at the beginning and one bracket at the end, then star, which multiplies by, and let's say two. See the way this has now stretched that out. And now I've got a range here from white through to black. It's because it's filled this histogram right up. Or I could bring this down a bit. I could say, say 1.7, and that brings that down a bit because it was a bit falling off the end there. But I want to be able to control this. So what I'll do here is rather than put a number here and play with a number and mess around with it, we'll use the bottom part here. What I'll say is star A. And a, there's no such thing as A here, so this just shows the original picture because it can't work out what you're doing. But what you can set A here to be a slide as 0 to 1, or minus 1 to 1. R means real, which means a fraction, and a, a Z is an integer. And don't bother about the other two for now. So I'm going to put just for now 0 0.1 there. So now I've got A. And it, that is substitute for this A here. And this is a value which goes from 0 to 1. See it here, so it shows you there. So if I bring this down here, it makes the whole thing darker, which effectively makes the mask 
less effective. It tones down the mask. But this is, I'd like to make this brighter. So what I'm going to do is put another one in here, say times B. Now I need a B. So what I'm going to put in here, I put R for real, which is a fraction. So now it works here, but this is naught, so that doesn't help. We need this at least to be one, because if you multiply by naught, everything goes to naught. So one bring this back up here, but if I bring up two, now I've got it up to, because it's multiplying by two, and then this fraction here. So as I pull this down, it's going to go below two, because it's multiplying by a fraction. So now as I pull this down, you can see here, it sort of brings this down here. Yep. So I could say, let's call this, say, call it base. And you can call it whatever you like, and I'll type in this going um, adjust, something like that. That'll do. I can even change this to bigger numbers, like this. I can also, if I hold down the, the left control key on a PC, then it goes up to a tenth at a time. So it's a bit more fine control there. And then I can use this again. So now I've got a way of setting the base amount here. So it depends upon what the original histogram is anyway. So if you've got like a high key or a low key picture, you're going to get very different histograms from that. But now I've got a way of adjusting this. So I can say just go down to two here and then set that to the value I like. I can then now turn the RGB off and put on A. And now you can see this is a much stronger selection of the areas that we had there. So what we can do with this now is to, we can save this. I'll look again at how to put in a preset, but you basically follow your nose down through here and the uh, hamburger there. So that's enough for now. And thank you very much for watching.